What's going on guys? My name is Michael and welcome to the first ever Rise Media tutorial. Need you to keep me close. How's everyone doing today? Super, super excited to finally get this going here. We got a really good one to start. It's an Adobe Premiere Pro Crash Course. Gonna go over the basics, start with the more beginner stuff, just so that people who aren't as savvy with the software don't get lost right away. We can kind of get everybody together, so let's get underway here. All right, so the first thing that's gonna open up is this little dialog box. You're gonna come to the left side, press New Project, and then this is where you're going to title your project. So I'm going to label it Adobe Premiere Pro Crash Course. Then come down to this Browse button, select it, and this is where you're going to save your project file to your laptop, computer, whatever you're working on. Awesome. Don't worry about any of this stuff right here. I'm just going to press OK and move on. All right, so now that we're in the software, this is gonna be the interface that probably pops open for most of you. Just make sure, go to this top panel up here, and just make sure you're selected on editing. You may be on color, audio, effects, it may not look exactly like mine, but to make sure you guys can follow along, come up here, press editing, and we should be all in the same boat. All right, so now that we're in the editing tab, we're gonna come down to the bottom left, and this is our project panel. I'm gonna open this up a little bit just so it's easier to see. And this is where we're going to be importing all of our media. Now there's a few ways to get media into the project. One way is simply double click and it's going to bring up this panel. Or you can do the keyboard shortcut which is command I and it'll bring up the same thing. So I'm going to go in, find some clips to bring into the project. All right, so once you have your, your clip selected, press import and it'll bring it in. So I have my clips selected in this list view. If you want a different view and you want to be able to see kind of the preview of your clips in this panel, just come down to the bottom left and there's this other selection called icon view. You press that and it'll pop up with your two clips, same two clips, but this you kind of get a preview. If you hover over it, you can get a preview and kind of watch your clip in here, which is neat. It's cool, but I think these boxes are too big. I don't like this workflow. I think it's neater in the list view, so that's the way I keep it. Now what I usually do for my video and audio, I usually have a bunch of stuff in here and I want to keep it organized. So how do I do that? It's very simple. You come down to the bottom right and select new bin. Now I'm going to label this video clips and then throw in these clips in this folder. It's just a little way to stay neat. So if I have audio video clips mixed in together, I don't get it confused. Okay, cool. So now that we have video clips in here, let's add a little bit of audio. We're going to go command I to import more media. Let's find some audio. Okay, cool. So I found some audio sound effects I want to bring in. Select them, press import, and they're going to come right in. Now, another way to get this bin is simply right click, new bin, type in audio sound effects. And we're going to drag and drop our audio sound effects. Oops. Drag and drop them into our folder. Now you see this popped up over here. I accidentally double click, which I'm going to go into next. So I usually work with audio first, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to be working with video. What you're going to want to do is, yes, you can just drag and drop your clips into the timeline, but that kind of defeats the purpose of the source monitor, which I really like using. What you're going to do is you're going to double click on a clip, and it's going to pop open in the source monitor. Now the purpose of the source monitor is basically so you can select the best part of each clip and bring it into your editing sequence. This kind of saves time and it also allows your sequence not to be as messy. You can kind of get over that stuff here, only bringing the best stuff that you want into your timeline so you're not worrying about any of the bullshit, any of the stuff that you're going to cut out. You really have the best of the best in there and that's what you want to work with. So now that we have a clip up here in the source monitor, we're going to scrub through it and find the best part that we want to select. All 
All right, so let's say this point is really cool. I like this part. I want to start my endpoint here. This is where I want to start the selection of my favorite part of this clip. So there's a few ways to do this. One way is to come down and select this button right here, which is the mark endpoint. Another way to do it is just simply press I on your keyboard for the shortcut, and that's going to select your endpoint. Then you're going to press play. Okay, let's say I want to stop there and we want to set our out point. You can come right to the right here, press the out button, or you can press O on your keyboard, and bam, we have our selected clip. Now we want to drag this into our timeline sequence so we can start working with it. Now there's a few ways to do this. If we just want the video, we're going to come to this button, drag video only. If we just want audio, come to the right, select this button, just drag audio only. For the sake of this tutorial, I want to bring both in. We're going to hold down on the frame, hold down, drag, and drop into our sequence. Okay, and now this is going to create our timeline and also pop up in the program, which is our live feed of what's going on down here. Okay, so now we have our timeline set up. Let's just move this a little bit bigger so we have more space. Go down to this little scrolly bar, mess around with the size of the timeline. We want to zoom in, that's pretty good. Okay, so what do all these buttons mean? It looks a little intimidating, but realistically, it's very, very simple. Let's start over here with these selection tools. There's basically three that I use. You know, you can use more. Some people like, you know, the hand tool, the pen tool, whatever works for you. But for what works for me is these three tools. Um, I keep it very simple. 95% of the time, I'm going to use this selection tool. It's my hand. It's my go-to. It's what I use to drag everything around. Very, very simple. And the keyboard shortcut is going to be V. So you're going to be using this literally all the time. It's going to be whatever you use to, you know, press stuff, press play. Selection. It's your selection tool. It's your go-to. The next one is going to be my blade tool, which is where I'm going to do all the cutting. The keyboard shortcut is C, so I'm going to come over here, press C, and this is what's going to enable me. It's my blade. It's going to enable me to cut wherever I want on my clip, delete parts that I don't want, move stuff around, stuff like that. Now let's just Command Z because we just cut up our, our clip. Go back to V, which is our selection tool. Okay, and now the third one I use is this. Track select forward tool, which is A on our in our on our keyboard. I usually use this for for big projects. It doesn't really make sense right now because I only have one clip in here, so it's a pretty bad example. But basically, what this tool does is it wherever you press down, it's going to select everything to the right of it. Okay, so if you're working on big projects and you want to move a big proportion of your project, you're going to select down, and it's going to select everything to the right of it. Okay, so let's just unselect this. Press V to our selection tool. Unselect that. Go back to our track select tool. Again, it doesn't really make sense. We have one, only one clip here, so it's obviously going to select it. But you press down, and it's going to select everything to the right of it. So it's very handy when moving big portions of your project. OK, so now we have these buttons over here. I'm going to go over just a few of them. You can play around with the other ones if you want. But very simply, we have V1, V2, V3. Those are going to represent all of your video layers. So V1 is obviously my video 1 layer. V2 is video layer 2, V3. You can go up as many as you want, I believe. but you know, this is very, very simple. We're just going to worry about V1, maybe V2. But uh, so those represent your video layers. And then likewise, down here, we have A1, A2, A3. Those represent your audio layers. If you have a lot of audio, you're doing a big audio mix, you know, you may need five, six, seven, eight, a lot more of them. But for right now, audio one is going to satisfy us. So the tools to the right of this, we have mute and solo. Those are big time for audio tracks. If you want your, to mute this track and you have a bunch of others that you just want to hear, um, you're going to mute it. Obviously, there's going to be no sound. You play it, and we're going to have no sound. If you just want to solo this track, you have a big uh, a big timeline. You just want to hear what this track does. It's going to solo that one out. Obviously, we only have one clip in here, so it doesn't really make sense to solo anything. And then this microphone works as voiceover recording, which you can do for voiceovers works very well. Now, another big thing up here is this tool right here. It's called Link Selection. And what link selection does basically is it sandwiches your video and your audio layers together. So now whenever I move one layer, the other one's going to come with it. Okay? They're sandwiched together now that I link them together. I personally hate this. I like to unlink them. Now there's a few ways to do this. Obviously, the simple way is just to come up here, press the link selection button, and unselect them. Now I can manipulate each clip individually, move it around, and it won't be sandwiched with that other clip. The other way to do it is if these are already together. You right click, come up here to un unlink, press that, and the same thing will happen. So if I delete the video layer, the audio layer is going to stay, and now they're unselected.
So now you're going to go up to the top right here, where you're going to have these buttons up here. I usually don't use these very often. Um, you got your, sp your play button, obviously it's going to play your video. <clears throat> you got your frame one forward button, frame one backward button. Guys, most of these buttons you can just use on your keyboard. Spacebar is obviously play and pause. You use your arrows on your little keypad to do one frame forward, one frame backwards. Very simple. Now the one thing that I really do like about this uh, panel up here is this loop button. So if I were to go onto my timeline and press in for in point and O for out point, I'll say a little bit about this in a second, but this is basically going to loop your selection. You see how that kind of loops? If I were to have this off and I just press play, it's going to stop at the end of the clip. So loop basically loops whatever is selected in your in and out points up here. Let's clear that real quick. And now while we're on that, see how this yellow bar is here? That means your clip is kind of in the middle of being rendered. If it's red, it's probably going to be very laggy, very slow. If it's green, it's probably going to be perfect, run smoothly. Now the way to render out a single clip is to drag to the top over here and you're going to press I for in. Let's just say I want half of it done. Select here, press O for out, come up to sequence, render in to out. And now this is going to render out the selection you have in your timeline. See how it's green now and it runs perfectly smooth? It's because it rendered it out. Now the last thing I have on this bar is this little camera logo over here. It's going to export a frame for you. Okay, now that we went over those buttons, let's just go back to our clip. Let's clear this in and out point so it's not in our way. Right click, clear in and out. Cool. We have this selected. Now let's go up back to the source monitor, but right next to it says effect controls. Okay, so now these are going to be your effect controls, which are really going to help you manipulate each clip individually. So very simply, we have our motion, which is our position and scale, rotation, anchor point, anti-flicker filter, opacity, and time remapping. So now let's work with motion. We have our position, which is going to work on our X and Y axis. So if we shift this to the left, it's going to move horizontally and to our right, likewise, horizontally. Okay, Command-Z that. The Y axis is going to shift it vertically. Okay, scale is going to be in and out. Cool. Rotation, kind of self-explanatory. It's going to rotate it. Okay, anchor point, anti-flicker filter. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. Don't even need to worry about that. Um, opacity, it's going to dissolve your image. Okay, if you want to do like smooth zoom in, like a cross dissolve to start your film, this is a good way to do that. For now, I'm going to keep it on 100. Cool. Time remapping, I'm going to go very into detail on that. It's very, very important. I don't usually use it in the effect controls. I usually use it in the timeline, but I'll go into that. It's very important, so stick around for that in another tutorial. So now we have our video in there. Let's just add an audio layer real quick. Let's go back to our clips. We have audio sound effects. And now we're in a helicopter clip, so let's go to our helicopter audio. We're going to go spacebar. I for input. point. O for out point. We like that. Select our audio. Drag it down to our audio layer. Boom, we're good. And now let's go back to another video clip, just add in this one, which is a underwater scene. Scrub through. Cool, I like that point. I for in. O for out. Let's bring it in. I don't really want the audio, I just want the video, so we're going to bring that through. And you know what? I don't like this audio clip down here. Just going to select it, press delete, and that's good. Now we're going to go up to our audio, bring in the little bubble sound effect. I for in point, press play. Cool, sounds good. O for out point, bring the audio down. Okay, we bring it into one of our audio layers. Let's just zoom this out a little bit so we can see better. So let's just cut this. We're going to use our C for blade tool. I want it to stop here. V, selection tool. Let's highlight it, delete it. Now we're going to bring this other clip over. Okay, cool. Let's just drag. Press on the end, you're going to get this little arrow looking logo. Drag it in to there. Move this other one over. Okay, cool. So now we want to go over to our effect controls, just see how we're doing here. I would really like to use my audio first, so I'm just going to turn off the eye here, which is going to disable the track. 
okay disables the video layer this little eyeballs these all just disable whatever video is in this layer gonna disable it real quick and work with our audio first so we're gonna press play okay cool so if we look when we play this button look over here in this because this is gonna be our audio meter it's gonna run in decibels we want to make sure it's either in the green maybe yellow but we really like it in that green area it's our sweet spot we definitely don't want it to be red red means it's redlining it's too loud we gotta turn this shit down so let's play it again and we're looking pretty good it's green um, but I really like it when it's between like 6 and 12 that's pretty much my best spot so let's look at this first one again it's around 12 to 18 so I'm just gonna bump it up about 5 go up here to our effect controls after I select the clip go to volume level 5 that's gonna add 5 decibels to our original volume go back perfect that looks really good our bubbles are way low we're looking at like 24 there Let's go up here, let's add 10, actually let's add 12. Too bad we can only add six. That's usually the maximum to these clips. You can only add six, so that's fine. Good enough, it's almost around 12, that'll work. All right, cool. Now we wanna enable this again. Bam, but look at this. So we play our clip through, and now we notice that our second clip has this massive black bars around. And I'm glad this happened because this is a perfect example. So when we added our first clip to the sequence, whatever clip we add to the sequence first is going to be the sequence settings. Now this clip is probably 4K and this clip is probably 1080. So since 4K is a way bigger file size than 1080, you know our 1080 clip is going to be way smaller than the frame size. So we're going to need to fix that. Now there's two ways to do this. You can simply go up, select the clip, go up to scale and zoom in which is obviously a good way to do it. I'm not going to do it that way. I like to just highlight all my clips, right click, go to set to frame size, and now the software knows, okay, this is the sequence settings and this is the clip settings. I'm going to match the clip settings with the sequence settings so that we fill the frame, we don't have any of these ugly black bars, and we're good to go. So now you play it through. Perfect. We're good to go. Now, if you want to just add a little dissolve to audio or video, it's very, very simple. You're going to go to the effects panel. Sorry, I did that a bit quick. The project panel on the left side, if you go to this little drop down menu over here, on the right side, they're going to have these little two arrows. Actually, if I bring this out, it might be easier to see. Well, effects is somewhere in here, but if you want to do the drop down menu, you've got to press these two little right arrows over here, go down to effects, and in effects, we're going to type in cross dissolve. Okay, which is a in software transition. We're gonna press it, drag it onto our timeline, and put it right in between these two clips. So now we're gonna have this nice smooth dissolve between the two. Now likewise, if we wanna mess around with our audio clips, we want these to be dissolving nice smoothly and together just like the video was. We're gonna go to our, basically it's the same thing as a cross dissolve, but just for audio, it's called constant Okay, so it's right here, same thing, drag and drop in between these clips. You may have to play around with it a little bit, move it around so, it, so it's nice. That looks about good, play it now, and we got that nice smooth dissolve in there. Okay, so now let's say my thing's lagging, it's a yellow bar up here, we don't want it to lag that much, we want it to render out, be good. We're going to go back to the top, press I for in the end O for out, go up to sequence settings, sequence up at the top, render into out, and it's gonna render it for us. Okay, perfect. Now it's nice and smooth, we have this nice green bar, nothing's gonna lag, and we're good to go. All right, now let's just say I want the second half of this video to be in slow motion, okay? So we're gonna cut, use our C razor tool, cut right there, we want this part to be slow motion. So we're gonna press on the clip, right click, speed duration, and let's say we just want it half the speed. So we go to 50%, press enter, and now we're gonna get this slow motion effect. Just really, really neat. Let's say we wanna go even further, 
we want to go right click speed duration and we want to go 25 percent it's going to make the clip a lot longer because it's slowing the duration okay i like 50 better i think it looks a lot cooler good with that move this audio clip always so we can get the full effect we're not going to render out in and out because the computer's handling it pretty well that's how you do slow motion very very simple you just manipulate the speed and speed duration guys that is all i have today for the basics thank you so much for listening in and if you have any suggestions comments anything you want to tell me anything you want to see in future videos please do not hesitate to leave them in the comment section below make sure you keep checking in on our youtube page we have tutorials coming out every thursday and saturday so keep a lookout for that thank you guys so much peace out